Welcome back to Ready Ag. My favorite job ever. Today's video shows a step-by-step -step guide to rebuilding a Case IH SDX drill, also known as a precision disc drill. We will be showing you how to tear down the machine, remove seize pins, and install main open arm brackets. Ready's goal from day one has been to help farmers keep on farming. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep up on all the fresh content posted weekly which includes helpful tips and tricks, new products, and various adventures. Also, make sure you check out Ready's website to shop our performance air seeder solutions. Alright, let's go! Boom. There it is. Boom. So one of the first steps that I've always learned that is most efficient is think of a production line. You want to have everything laid out and so you're doing less categories of tasks. You don't want to have to reach for a drill every time, reach for a nut. It would make no sense to do that and maintain efficiency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay everything out first all across this width of the machine. Even the direction you put these down makes a difference in how fast they go together. We're gonna wanna pick these up like this. I'd recommend putting them on the ground like so, so that it's easy to reach your hand under there, lift them up and go right into place. Next, I've gathered up all the U-bolts and nuts to get me quite a ways down the rank, and I'm gonna slip all these A bolts or U bolts onto the rank all the way down. All my A bolts are mounted on the rock shaft. All my buckets or brackets are on the ground in an orientation that's helpful. I'm gonna grab two nuts in my right hand, and now I'm gonna pick up this bracket like so and lift it up like this. I've already got the bushings pre-installed on these brackets and I'm holding it with the hole down. And now I'm gonna take my left hand and grab the A-bolts and hold those in place. Grab two more nuts. Spin it on, get it started. And there you go. Just like that, you notice I'm not gonna tighten these until I'm all done. I'm gonna run through and tighten them all at the same time. That way I can hold the gun and not have to let go. I don't have to keep setting, picking up the gun or setting it down. Man, they're loud. Now, a helpful tip to make this go real easy and not have to exert too much energy trying to hold this up, because boy, at least my skinny arms, I get fatigued pretty fast and uh, I get some arm pump. It's not gonna last, or I'm not gonna last all day doing that. So. I get this mounted, line up the holes like before, get this bracket up, and I pinch these A-bolts together. You notice that? Now that bracket cannot fall down. So this is a real nice tip to uh, save you a lot of time and a lot of energy. Now that I've got all the buckets hung with the A-bolts, I'm keeping them loose so that way they can still slide really easily on the rock shaft. What I'm doing is I'm putting in this retaining plate to keep this spring bushing from coming out. If you don't put that in there, what can happen over time is as this pin is in there, 
like so, this bushing will walk out. And so our solution was, let's just laser cut that same plate that welds onto the pin and bolt it on as a retaining plate. So I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks of putting these on. It's pretty simple, but you just wanna watch which side you put them on and when you tighten the buckets before you hang the rows. If you tighten it too soon, you're gonna be taking them off or loosening them because you just can't get the pin in. This row, for example, is right next to this rock shaft mount. And you're not gonna be able to put a pin in from this side when you're hanging the row. That means we want this retainer plate to go to the inside here up against this mount. The way to do that is with this loose, I'm gonna slide this over, over there, give me some room. Then I'm gonna take one of my pins that comes in these kits and I'm gonna use it as an alignment and a, and a holding tool. So I'll put the plate on, let it drop on there, and then slide it in the side that I want it. Now, get the bolt, put it in the plate, drop it in, get the nut, get it started, just like so. We really like and recommend a right angle tool like this. This is a 3 8 drive. M12 Milwaukee fuel. It puts on right about the, the, the right amount of torque. It's about 35 foot pounds. These are grade 8 3 8 bolts with flanges on them. And it, it does just enough where you don't have to go back and retorque them or risk torquing them too much. And then they can fail when they're being in the, used in the field. Now I'm going to take my wrench, put my hand over here, hold the, the head side of the bolt. We like to put the head side on the outside. So there's no clearance issues here with the thread sticking out. I'm going to hold the pin at the same time. Bring my impact. Let it rip. That's torqued. Now I'm going to slide the pin out. If the pin's a little sticky, what you can do is pound it a few times and it moves that plate more centered. So now your pin will come and go very easily. You don't want anything holding this up when you're trying to hang a row. Putting a row up here is just exhausting. And so someone's going to hold the pin and then someone else is going to bring the row up. And as they get it close, we're going to drive that pin in through here like so into the next side. And it's going to keep that bushing from popping out then and in the field. And notice how with that installed, we can get this row unit right up against this mount and not have any clearance issues. There's no threads hitting it. It's a good place to be. Now that the retaining plates are on, we can clamp down these brackets and get them ready to hang rows. A couple things you want to note or be aware of is there's a few you do not want to tighten yet until after you've hung the row and then you'll use a wobble extension or adapter socket thing to tighten it after the row is hung. And those ones are the ones where the two rows are very close together where it turns from left to right. You cannot get a pin in without shifting the whole row and then tightening the A-bolts later. The tool of choice for this job is a mid-torque impact, not the stubby mid-torque, but the true Milwaukee M18 fuel mid-torque. It's a really good wrench. It's going to get the proper torques. We're going to do a setting three and always watch your battery. If your battery gets to one or less, you're gonna lose torque. And we've found that that can cause problems with getting your final torque and you might have an issue later on. And you might not even know it because it might seem like it got tight, but it missed some of the foot pounds. Make sure you got hearing protection and eye protection, even though we're just running an impact. What I'm looking to do is get the similar or same amount of thread sticking out of each nut. I'm going to try to alternate them and that way this will go on more evenly and I won't have issues with it warping or tweaking uh, and which will cause a big problem with when you hang the rows that roll will not fit in here properly. I'm going to make a tool so that I can check the space as I go because that's something else that we want to make sure we we check before you're trying to hang a heavy roll and you find out it doesn't fit in there. That's the worst time to to find that out. You want to find it out right now and address it. Now I've got a similar amount of threads sticking out of here and here. 
Same with these. And I'm gonna now check the space to make sure that that row unit's gonna clear. I made this go no go gauge out of a pin we cut. And what I did is I left it about an eighth inch longer or wider than the base of the row, just to make sure that the row will always be able to fit up in here and, and uh, go in here without a fight. So right now it's, it's a little tight, but that ensures I don't over tighten these nuts and get this thing all warp, warped, tweaked, and not able to take a row.